We're going to move on now to our GMA cover story, a health alert about RSV, a virus surging in recent weeks. And while RSV is common, it's not well known and it can be very dangerous. Ariel Reshef is here. And Ariel, unfortunately, you found this all out firsthand. Yeah, I did, Amy. Right now, the cold weather is keeping little ones indoors, and that means spreading germs. RSV is rampant this time of year. Our family just had a scare with our baby Maverick, and now a mom in Virginia is also sharing her story to warn others. The night he became unresponsive is probably something I will live with for the rest of my life. This morning, three-month-old Cameron Tate finally released from the hospital after a frightening bout with RSV. Respiratory syncytial virus presents for most of us like a nagging common cold. Symptoms like cough, congestion, lack of appetite, and fussiness. At first, it just started out with a runny nose and a pretty deep, wet cough. But for babies and the elderly, RSV can be potentially dangerous. It is a virus that just has to take its course. And in the meantime, we have to make sure that babies are able to breathe, they're able to stay hydrated, and they're not having high fevers that can get them in trouble. The CDC reports, on average, 2.1 million children under age 5 are diagnosed with RSV every year. And like in Cameron's case, it can spiral quickly. The little one testing positive for the virus on December 23rd. Two days later, on Christmas, he was admitted to the hospital. He became extremely dehydrated um, to the point he was completely unresponsive. And they had to give him an emergency IV to kind of like bring him back. My babies brush with RSV coming just days before. Our five-month-old Maverick testing positive in the doctor's office Saturday. By Sunday, he had shortness of breath and was admitted for 24-hour observation in the hospital. A terrifying turn, but thankfully our Mav is back to his smiley self. Most babies do totally fine, even if they require a few days of a hospital admission. Thank you, boo. And baby Cameron, home and healthy after six days on oxygen and breathing tubes. His mom thankful for the care he received and for her intuition that told her something just wasn't right. I would want other parents to know when dealing with RSV, always go with your gut feeling. It's good advice there and so glad Cameron's okay, okay, so glad Mav is okay. Doctors say it's easy for babies to contract RSV from older siblings. We think that's what happened in our case. Mayor came home sick and then Mav got it. That's why hand washing, cleaning surfaces, very good strategies for prevention. And it's also important to just trust your gut when something doesn't feel right and you feel like your baby may be demonstrating some of these symptoms, see your doctor. Yeah, no, and it's so yeah. great of you to share your personal story because I think a lot of parents don't know. I just told you I'd never heard of it. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm past the danger point now with my kids being older, but thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, we're absolutely. so happy Maverick's feeling thank better. Thank you we so much. We're Me very too. happy. All right, we're going to bring Dr. Jennifer Ashton in now because she joins us from Massachusetts. And I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Jen, we heard this is common, but how common is this virus? Well, Amy, let's take RSV by the numbers. Um, first of all, it's the most common cause of pneumonia in babies under the age of one. By the age of two, most babies and toddlers, the majority have already been exposed to it. And as we heard Ariel said in the piece, over two million cases of RSV are diagnosed in children under the age of five in this country every year. If you've heard the term bronchiolitis, that's kind of bronchitis for babies or children. That is likely a sign that your baby or toddler has had RSV. And this is a reminder that it's not just the flu circulating now. There's rhinovirus, adenovirus, RSV, parainfluenza. There are other upper respiratory viruses that are circulating and can make people sick. All right, so what should people and parents specifically know about the symptoms to this virus? They they really vary based on age, Amy. In, ter in terms of adults, older children, they might have mild or no symptoms at all. Babies, toddlers, the symptoms generally start with a runny nose, then progress to sneezing, cough, fever, fatigue. There can be a headache. Obviously, you wouldn't hear that from your baby, but in, in older children, it really does depend on the age. The vast majority of cases will resolve on their own in about five days. Right, because, you know, those symptoms, you see them all the time when you have little kids. So at what point point should you worry at what point should you take your baby or your toddler to the hospital 
Well, if we're talking not just respiratory virus like RSV, but any upper respiratory infection, here are the warning signs and symptoms that people should be aware of, particularly parents of babies and young children. Shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. And in an infant or baby, that shows up as flaring of the nostrils or retraction of the rib muscles with each breath. If there's a bluish discoloration around the lips or the nail beds, we call that cyanosis, that can be a sign they're not getting enough oxygen and obviously if they become lethargic you want to get them to an emergency room immediately all right very important information dr jen happy new year thanks for being you with too, us you too my dear happy and healthy well hey there gma fans robin roberts here thanks for checking out our youtube channel lots of great stuff here so go on click the subscribe button right over right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from gma every day anytime we thank you for watching and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.